Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. Today we have a very special tale from China, and it's not often that we get to see the making of a god. But that's exactly what we're going to get today. The creation of a god from a historical figure. And as a bonus, hopefully soon, we'll be able to read some of the stories of that historical figure. But this is the creation of the god. This is the god of war. The god of war, Guan Di, was really named Guan Yu. At the time when the rebellion of the Yellow Turbans was raging throughout the empire, he, together with two others whom he met by the wayside, and who were inspired by the same love of country which possessed him, made a pact of friendship. One of the two was Liu Bi, afterward emperor, and the other was named Chang Fi. The three met in a peach orchard and swore to be brothers one to the other, although they were of different families. They sacrificed a white steed and vowed to be true to each other to the death. Guan Yu was faithful, honest, upright, and brave beyond all measure. He loved to read Confucius's Annals of Lu, which tell of the rise and fall of empires. He aided his friend Liu Bi to subdue the yellow turbans and to conquer the land of the four rivers. The horse he rode was known as the Red Hare and could run a thousand miles in a day. Guan Yu had a knife shaped like a half-moon which was called the green dragon. His eyebrows were beautiful like those of the silk butterflies, and his eyes were long-slitted like the eyes of the phoenix. His face was scarlet-red in color, and his beard so long that it hung down over his stomach. Once, when he appeared before the emperor, the latter called him Duke Fairbeard, and presented him with a silken pocket in which to place his beard. He wore a garment of green brocade. Whenever he went into battle, he showed invincible bravery. Whether he were opposed by a thousand armies or ten thousand horsemen, he attacked them as though they were merely air. Once, the evil Cao Cao had incited the enemies of his master, the emperor, to take the city by treachery. When Guan Yu heard of it, he hastened up with an army to relieve the town but he fell into an ambush, and together with his son was brought a captive to the capital of the enemy's land. The prince of that country, who would have been glad to have had him go over to his side. But Guan Yu swore that he would not yield to death himself. Thereupon, father and son were slain. When he was dead, the red horse ceased to eat and died. A faithful captain of his, by the name of Chao Tsang, who was black-visaged and wore a great knife, had just invested a fortress when the news of the sad end of the duke reached him. And he, as well as other faithful followers, would not survive their master, and perished. At the time, a monk, who was an old compatriot and acquaintance of Duke Guan, was living in the hills of the Jade Fountains. He used to walk at night in the moonlight. Suddenly, he heard a loud voice cry down out of the air, I want my head back again. The monk looked up and saw Duke Guan, sword in hand, seated on his horse just as he appeared while living. And at his right and left hand, shadowy figures in the clouds, stood his son, Guan Ping, and his captain, Chao Tsang. The monk folded his hands and said, When you lived, you were upright and faithful, and in death you have become a wise god, and yet you do not understand fate. If you insist on having your head back again, to whom shall the many thousands of your enemies who lost their lives through you appeal, in order to have life restored to them? When he heard this, the Duke Guan bowed and disappeared. Since that time, he has been without interruption spiritually active. 
Whenever a new dynasty is founded, his holy form may be seen. For this reason, temples and sacrifices have been instituted for him, and he has been made one of the gods of the empire. Like Confucius, he received the great sacrifice of oxen, sheep, and pigs. His rank increases with the passing of the centuries. First, he was worshipped as Prince Guan, later as King Guan, and then as the great god who conquers the demons. The last dynasty finally worships him as the great divine helper of the heavens. He is also called the god of war, and is a strong deliverer in all need when men are plagued by devils and foxes. Together with Confucius, the master of peace, he is often worshipped as the master of war. And that is the story of Guan Yu, in the making of the god of war. And as the story alludes to, much like Confucius, there are a number of tales of Guan Yu, and we will bring those to you in future readings from China. This is Dan Scholes for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget, if you'd like to help support the podcast, you can always head over to patreon.com slash folktaleproject or simply just leave a rating or review on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or anywhere else that you like to listen. As always, thank you so much for listening.